Good evening. My name is Keith Harrison, and this is the Evening News. In home news, the Irish Taoiseach, Enda Kenny, has pledged to open an investigation into the 30 billion euro bailout of Anglo-Irish Bank, as it emerged that an executive sang Deutschland, Deutschland über alles, as colleagues joked about German money flowing into the country after a state guarantee of the institution's deposits. A banker is heard on tape joking and singing the former first lines of the Deutschland lead, not used since the Nazis made the first stanza of their anthem. As the bank's then chief executive, David Trump, urges his executives, this can't be right, to get the fucking money in. Urges them to get the fucking money in? The recording was made in September 2008 when the Irish state stepped in to rescue a bank brought low by a property lending spree. Get the fucking money in! Enda Kenny, the Taoiseach, paved the way for a parliamentary inquiry into an axis of collusion, although he stopped short of a full Levison-style inquiry. Get the fucking money in! Referring to the former Taoiseach, Brian Cowan, who ran the country during the Anglo-Irish bailout, he said, I assume that our predecessors here, people who served in high office, and in those governments would have the opportunity and would have the willingness, I assume, to come to the parliamentary inquiry. Well done, Enda. The latest recordings to be leaked from inside the bank will compound national outrage in Ireland over the behaviour of Anglo-Irish bankers. Get the fucking money in! Dublin intervened in September 2008 with a guarantee of the bank's deposits to keep it afloat, a move that anchored London and Berlin because it enticed money from British and German savers. Get the fucking money in. Cowan's blanket bank guarantee, much criticized as foolish by other European Union governments, was designed to prevent Anglo's immediate collapse, but instead put Ireland on a slippery slope to bailing out all six Irish-owned retail banks. In one conversation, two days after the fateful bank guarantee, Drum giggles, <laughs> while his colleague, John Bow then Director of Capital Markets, recites lines from the Deutschland lead. Drum, who has since fled to the US, and Bo are heard laughing about fears that the guarantee would drive a wedge between Ireland and its EU partners. The former said he would give two fingers to UK concerns. Bo was recorded boasting that he'd picked the figure of 7 billion euro, which he suggested would be the cost of rescuing the Irish state, out of my arse out of my arse. Get the fucking money in, out of my arse. Ireland's tarnished that Eamon Gilmore admitted on Tuesday ministers had been unaware the recorded conversations existed, even though the state has owned the bank since it was nationalised in 2009, and even though it has been in possession of the tapes since 2009. He said the degree of arrogance and hubris of the bankers, get the fucking money in, highlighted in the tapes was shocking and made clear the need for a full parliamentary inquiry into the Irish banking collapse. That's why we have brought forward legislation to establish such an inquiry, and I hope that the legislation will be enacted before the summer and we can get on with it. Gilmore added that the revelations could compromise Irish attempts to win further debt relief from the European Union. It makes it more difficult, of course it does, but we're going to continue to work to get the best possible outcome for the Irish taxpayer. <laughs> The best possible outcome for the Irish taxpayer. That's you, Enda. And now, in international news, the latest from Cyprus. On the 16th of March 2013, the Eurogroup, European Commission, European Central Bank and International Monetary Fund agreed a 10 billion deal with Cyprus, making it the fifth country after Greece, Ireland, Portugal and Spain to receive money from the EU IMF. On June 19th, News emanating from Cyprus suggested that medieval feces discovered at an ancient castle in Cyprus has revealed that the Crusaders suffered from a bad case of the worms and of poor hygiene habits. <laughs> Researchers Ivelina Anastasia and Piers Mitchell, whose report appears in the International Journal of Paleopathology said, the discovery of these parasites highlights how medieval Crusaders may have been at risk of malnutrition at times of, of siege and of famine, as these worms competed with them for nutrients. It seems as many as one in five crusaders on long expeditions died from malnutrition or infectious diseases. Duh! The latest news has angered many Cypriots. <coughs> with one noting, let's think about that for a moment. Cyprus is a country strangled by debt, 
struggling beneath the heel of the austere European boot. Cyprus can't pay its road sweepers, but someone, somewhere, has the funds to send researchers there to dig up the contents of a 12th century toilet. And now, in fashion news, I don't know how the fuck to say his name. This season, Domenico Dolce and Stefano Gabbana staged their latest spring-summer show just three days after the pair were sentenced to jail time for tax evasion in an Italian court. While it's highly unlikely they'll end up behind bars, the recent jail sentences serve to intensify the hysteria around what is always one of the most high-profile shows on the Milanese schedule. Sicily, the eternal and endless font of Dolce and Gabbana inspiration, was mined again, this season for its mythology. The show was less mythological than lithographical, with Tormina ruins resembling hotel lobby artwork splashed across unchallenging suits, silk t-shirts, sweaters and underwear in a series of wonderful colours. Mr Cabana declared that the show was a resounding success and he said, it's the dog's bollocks. I'm Keith Harrison, this is the Main Evening News.